Let's, uh, for now, though, take a look at uh, our thought for the day. And today's speaker is Liz Hughes. I've been to Mass two weeks in a row. You should be impressed. It's not something a Presbyterian minister does often. I know I can't actually participate in the communion. Catholic Church law does not allow for that. But I joined in everything I could. The first occasion was just a neighbourly visit to our local Catholic Church at St Mary's Star of the Sea White House. They have always been great friends to us, and we joined to show our support for one another. But the second visit, Sunday week ago, was to unfamiliar territory, St Patrick's, the Catholic Cathedral in Armagh. Such a beautiful building. I'd never been inside it before. It was also an historic occasion, as five married men with children were being ordained to the permanent diaconate and we had been invited because we knew one of them, Martin Barlow, very well. It was a mega service. Two hours, 20 minutes. Awe-inspiring music, lots of Latin and fabulous clergy outfits. There were many important elements which Presbyterians and Catholics would share. Love for Jesus Christ, reverence for scripture, familiar well-known hymns. But at other times, we weren't entirely sure whether to stand or sit or kneel. At one stage we had a long prayer which mentioned at least two pages of saints, most of which I had never heard of, and the prayer invited those saints to pray for us. To be honest, I felt I can't really do this. I was well out of my comfort zone. But as always, I tried to think what might be the equivalent in our own tradition. I recalled the list of saints who died in faith in the book of Hebrews in the Bible, and how we are reminded in the very next chapter that life is a bit like a race. We are the ones doing the running now, but those who have gone before us are urging us on, and at the end of the day, what matters first and foremost is that we fix our eyes on Jesus, the one on whom our faith depends from start to finish. Later, we enjoyed a meal with the family and friends of Deacon Martin in St John's Pastoral Centre in Portadown. It was a wonderful celebration, and we were reminded even around the table that we have so much more to unite us than to divide. I am in no doubt that as Martin begins his ministry, his own faith will depend on Christ from start to finish. And I continue to pray the same for mine.